Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about using arrays. So let's start with iterating over an array. Now that we can set up our array, how can we loop through all of the elements? Doing this is called iterating over the array. So let's say we have an integer array called scores, which we set up its initial values with an initializer list. To iterate over the array, we'll do a for loop. For int i is zero, i is less than scores dot length, i plus plus and then system.out.println scores of i. When I say scores of i, I mean we're accessing the ith element. So that's how we can loop or iterate over the array. Now let's say we want to sum an array. So we have our in array of scores, and then we create a uh, sum variable in sum equals zero outside the loop. And then we can say for int i is zero, i is less than scores dot length, i plus plus. And then within the loop, we'll say sum plus equals score of i. So we're adding the ith element to the sum before we print it out. So arrays can be used in lots of places. Arrays can be the type of an instance variable in any of our classes. So if you remember back to our student class, we could have an instance variable storing exam scores like private and array exams. Or we could have lots of student objects in a class called classroom. In classroom, you may have a private instance variable of an array of student objects like private student array of students. So remember, the type of the array can be anything. It could be an object or it can be a primitive. And arrays can be return type or parameter of a method. So here I show a demo sample method, uh, private int array, get best score, student array of students. So you could say this could be a method that, that takes an array of students and returns an array of ints. So you can find arrays in parameters or return values. It's also important to know about exceptions for arrays. So let's say I make a new int array that has four spots. And then I go and say int val equals ARR of four. Well, what will happen here? Well, what will happen is you'll get a runtime error and we'll get an array index out of bounds exception. And you can see from the diagram below that our array only has four slots. And when we go and try and access index four, that's out of bounds. That's past the outside of the array. One other important topic is assigning array references. So you can see here we have ARR, which is equal to an array with 10, 3, 123, and 44. And then we go and say we have another int array, ARR2, which is equal to ARR. And then we go and say ARR of one equals 88. And what's important here is that ARR of one and ARR two at index one are both equal to 88 because this is the same array. So let's take a look at that visually becomes, because it comes a bit clearer. So here you can see on the highlighted purple line, we create an array with four spots and set the initial values of the elements. But then when we make AR2 instead of equal to ARR, it doesn't make a new array. It actually just points to the same array. So then you can see when we go and modify ARR at index one and set that equal to 88, it's actually changing it for both arrays because this is the same object and ARR2 is pointing, it's just a reference to that same array. So let's go explore these examples in our editor. Okay, so first, let's write a program that creates an array and iterates over the array. So we'll say int array ARR equals, and we'll say the array has 2, 10, 12, 13, 10, and 142. So that's our array. And then to loop over the array, we'll say for int i equals 0, i is less than ARR dot length, i plus plus. And we'll say system dot out dot println ARR of i. So we'll run that. And we can see it iterates over and prints out all the values in the array. Now let's write a program that sums an array. So we'll say int array ARR equals, and we'll give it 4, 10, 24, 142, 123, and 13. Then we'll create a variable to store the sum. And we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than ar dot length, i plus plus. And then we'll say we're gonna add to the sum uh, the element at position i. And then we'll print out the results. So say subsum.printline 
the sum is plus sum. So let's run this program. Great. Okay, now let's take a look at running our out of bounds program. So we make an array, uh, ARR, that has four slots. But then we go and try and access index four, which is out of bounds. So we run this code, and you can see we get a crash, out of bounds on line six. So we get an array index out of bounds exception. So remember to track your indices. Okay, now let's look at a program that creates a classroom class. Uh, so we have classroom tester, and we can go and look at the individual classes in this program. So student.java is similar to before. We have a first name, a last name, a grade level, and a GPA. And you can see we have a constructor and a setter method and a two string. And now we have a new classroom.java. So one of the key things is we have, as an instance variable, private student array called students. So this is an array of student objects. And then when we make, um, when we make the classroom object in the constructor, we initialize the array. We say students equals new student and pass in number of students. Um, and so you can see in our add student method, what we're doing is we're saying um, students at the current index equals the student that's passed in as a parameter, and then we increment the current index and total number of students. So um, basically, with arrays, you know, arrays have a fixed size. So if you want to keep track of how many spots you're using up in that array, uh, you actually need to keep track of your own variables. And you can see in Classroom Tester, we uh, create a new classroom and then create a couple students and then add them and print them out. So we'll run this code. And you can see uh, what we get. We have our classroom, and you can see we have our couple students, and it prints out the, the students in our class. So uh, this is an example of using an array in a program with multiple classes. OK, and so now we're going to extend this example uh, to exam scores. And so if you go look at student.java, we've extended this, and student Dot Java now has a private array storing exams, which are exam scores for this student. So we have a method here to get the exam average, and the average returns a double, where we sum all the um, sum the exams that they've taken, and uh, you know divide by the number of exams. We have a method to print out all the exam scores, and we have a method to add an exam score. So this adds an exam score to the exams array. So uh, that's our student.java. Um, in classroom, classroom is very similar. And in classroom tester, there's a little bit more. We have a utility method to generate exam scores for a student. Um, and you can see what we'll do is we'll make our classroom, create two students, generate their exam scores, and then add those students to the class. So uh, we'll run this code. And you can see we have our classroom, um, Ada Lovelace is in grade 12 with average exam 68.75, and Alan Turing is in grade 11 with average exam 84.75, and here you can see those are all of Alan's exam scores. If we run it again, you can see we're generating new exam scores. We'll take a look at one more program, which is our array references program, where we created an array, uh, made AR2, which is just a reference to AR, and then we change a value at AR at index one. And you can see when we do this, um, that we actually will change the values in both of them because they're pointing to the same object. And so we'll also test that by changing AR2 of zero. So if we run this code, you'll see that printing out ARR and ARR2 at index 1 are both 88, and ARR and ARR2 at index 0 are both 80. So remember that arrays are objects, and when you say ARR2 equals ARR, you're really not copying over that array.